Hello, everybody. Welcome to my great conjunction video, but even further, uh, a new 200 year cycle we're moving into, which is denoted by the shifts of the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn that will uh, take us through the next two centuries. So let me dig in. I hope everybody's doing well. And spiritually, you know, the meaning of the darkest day in the Northern Hemisphere, the winter solstice, always carries the message of hope. Ancient Egypt viewed a divine connection between the winter solstice and creation itself. In life, we often have to accept darkness as we experience it, whether it be darkness within ourselves, friends, family, or just the world in general. We have to accept it, but we always hold on to the hope that one way or another, the light will shine brighter and the light shining bright within each and every one of you great souls populating the planet right now. So the winter solstice occurs at 5.02 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, December 21st. As the sun transits into Capricorn just a few hours later at 1.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Jupiter and Saturn conjunct at zero degrees of Aquarius. They're both sitting at the cusp of the sign that they both transited into mid-December. So this conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn happens every 20 years. The last conjunction occurred in May 2000 at 22 degrees of Taurus and the dot-com tech bubble burst, a stock market bubble burst caused by excessive speculation of internet related companies from about 1995 to 2004. It was a massive period in the growth in the use and the adoption of the internet. And I was in high tech at that time. I was programming as, you know, URLs weren't even on websites yet. And then I was working in high tech employment placement when the uh, dot com burst. And I lost my job eight months later, which was great because it moved me into uh, training anyway. So the reminder of connecting with the earth and grounding during a period of massive online growth and digital activity has also been a quality of this last conjunction. Do you live much of your life and expression out in the digital space? Do you interact with mother earth and your relationships over coffee or over the phone? So balance has been a big signature of this period of time as well. And also people have been focused on working harder to earn money, to save money, to invest. Indeed, the economy is going to be a strong focus into the year ahead, 2021, as the coronavirus and political actions will be affecting the global landscape. And for your personal video on this, I do all 12 videos every month, a dollar a month, $11 a year. So sign by sign, more of an individual focus and perspective. That's on my Patreon. Yeah, the great conjunction um, gave us a sneak peek in Libra back in 1981, which highlighted love and relationships of all kinds not only romantic or marital relationships, uh, but that were central to your new life direction and making commitments even to major projects or artistic endeavors. It hit an angle in my chart during the early 1980s and I was heavily involved in performance art and choreographing and um, you know, in that arena. It was a big time for development for me in that period of time. So Jupiter and Saturn conjunctions, you start to see new directions for your ambitions and you begin to formulate uh, new goals for social activity and achievement. And if the transiting conjunction or other major phases of this cycle falls in a powerful place in your natal chart on a 
um, ascendant degree, your midheaven, your IC, your sun, Mercury, any of your personal planets. You may see very specific accomplishments uh, moving forward at this time. The conjunction is the beginning is the beginning of a formative process that will continue to unfold over the next 20 years. That's why we have to give them their due. The Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is called the Great Conjunction as it is a strong indicator of a new cycle in everything from political shifts to popular trends, societal trends over the next 20 year period. And the next great conjunction is in Libra, October 31st in 2040. I just wanna give you paint perspective here. Further, this conjunction is highlighting a new two century trend as it will occur predominantly in air signs. So let's go back for a moment. We learn from reflection and take a look at the past 200 years. The past two centuries, the conjunction has occurred in Earth. And we saw over this past 200 year period, substantial wealth creation, land settlement, territorial disputes, and also a resistance to change with influence and power. One can sway political and government sectors and create more control over the masses. Currently, we see this through the use of mass surveillance and spending habits. This technology allows sectors to more accurately advertise, sell human behavioral habits. We've become the product. Uh, we've become the product, humans, to political parties. They sell our data to transnationals. This two century trend is not going to be working so well anymore as every passage holds a beginning and an ending point where influences build and are then in need of phasing out. So in Aquarius, Growing commitments occur within community, group, and political involvement, and uh, deeper involvement in groups, organizational commitments, increased political consciousness is going to proliferate during this uh, next 20 year cycle, and activism, of course. Fundraising for organizations and political causes, and the great conjunction in air signs relate to rapid social progress, intellectual development, and new con concepts entering into human consciousness. It's gonna be a time of original ideas and innovations that will be valued in some cases over wealth and celebrity and status. This is a time of seeking new solutions to old problems, and this epoch will certainly deliver false starts, but also the potential for great optimism into the years ahead. Old forms are dying, birthing the fertility for new growth, and chaos always, chaotic nodes are always a, um, a signature of great societal change. They just are. Because it's like something's ending, but the beginning hasn't fully taken shape and form yet. And so uh, the sense of chaotic energy, which is highly creative, um, is a part of this transition. Saturn's transit of the fixed air sign Aquarius uh, occurs through March 2023 and can be expressed as the conflict between the old Saturn and the new Aquarius or traditional versus the radical and the modern. This is further magnified by the Uranus transit as Taurus is also in a fixed sign, a financial sign in Earth. Saturn represents the establishments 
and systems whose dictate is to main con maintain control and Uranus as the collective or populist energy, urging the people to pursue freedom, independence, and individuality. Naturally, uh, people are going to hold different ideas and value systems as to what this should look like. But Jupiter also is transiting through Aquarius until May of 2021. Then he scoots into Pisces until July of 2021, and then retrogrades back into Aquarius until the end of December 2021. So interestingly, this appears to be the timeline uh, for COVID vaccination availability for those of you who are seeking that. And Jupiter's transit of Aquarius can be expressed as mentally adventurous, adventurous and humanitarian leanings and group identity, huh, worthy causes in a larger worldview. Here lives optimism for the future and it favors learning. Jupiter's expression can also include great generosity and fortunate opportunities, but can also manifest as egoic greed and delusions of grandeur that needs the stabilizing influence of Saturn to trim the excess and strengthen what is in a state of growth. This can expand the need to be right, which we're seeing very strongly here in the United States. There's a lot of absolute thinking right now, which to me is always a little lazy and oversimplified. This is all right, that is all wrong, this party's great, this party's wrong. Um, and I myself have never found that to be true, uh, absolute. So what this is, is the need for nuanced thinking, right? Because it's easy to just say, that's bad, that's good. You're playing the third dimensional game. And that's true for you spiritual folks too, um, that this is all good, this is all bad. Uh, there's nuances, there's shadings within all of the dramatic situations playing out. But this can also really bring a pleasure and responsibility and an enjoyment of your works and goals, Saturn Aquarius. It's a balancing act of kind of tempering optimism with organizing and pragmatism. It's very kind of uh, ninth house with sixth house or ninth house and third house because the ninth house is your belief system and do facts support your belief system? Okay. Um, that status. So the themes ahead encompass revolutionary trends, progressive ideals, collaboration, uh, the tribe. Status can transition through this period into the next 200 years ahead from the accumulation of wealth and power in controlled settings to the artistic, creative, and intellectual in settings that are not so controlled. COVID has been in some ways a great equalizer for innovative thinking for musicians, artists, and content creators uh, via YouTube. The celebrity machine, you know, um, has been kind of <laughs> inoperative, inoperable during this COVID event. And so it's coming up with this is they may not have all of the PR management behind them, but wow, they're really smart or intelligent or that's really creative or I love their music or you see what I'm saying. So this is part of this trend that is taking hold. Ideas can be uh, valued over wealth and celebrity as original innovative approaches increase. And the United States particularly has really been programmed to sit at the feet of celebrity and you know the cult of personality. Um, so this will be really interesting moving forward. This can bring a sh shift when, when more people are valued and cared for regardless of their financial status and moving away from financial status where private ownership is valued and rewarded past two centuries 
and the old habits of seeking security, earth, while trading in your freedom, will take some time for this to gain traction and form into the years ahead. Now, when Saturn exits Aquarius in 2023, Pluto fully commits to Aquarius in January 2024 through 2044, which highlights deep transformative energy. This is not going away. That's why this is incredible, such an incredible conjunction that we're seeing at the solstice, December 21st. The big picture is that this is a technology and communication renaissance that includes a vision of the whole. Energy waves, telepathy, astrology, e egalitarian trends toward resource distribution. 800 years ago, this air trend, the conjunction, was manifest. And I want to refer now to, and I want to give a nod to Raymond Merriman and some of his insights, insights and writings. In um, 1200, the population urged for more rights and freedom and less repression. In 2015, the Magna Carta, a charter of liberties which forced King John to agree to new rights under threat of civil war. Demands were born out of a heavy debt burden that the population was under and oppressive taxes that the king had created. He would give up his oppressive actions and the populace would have new rights. A good example is the huge burden we're currently seeing now with college loans, which will surpass credit card, auto loans, in uh, 2022, it's obscene. And Congress, both parties, passed legislation making it much more difficult for um, students to declare bankruptcy. Again, protecting the banks, protecting the wealth sector. Um, and this was in direct contrast to, you know, public and corporate laws, uh, a heavier, peonage and control system was placed on students seeking to advance to higher education. Why? The country's outstanding student loan balance is projected to swell to two trillion by 2022, far surpassing credit card, auto debt, and experts say a large portion of it is unlikely to ever be repaid. More than a quarter of borrowers are in delinquency or default. So today, similar demands are being made globally as populations cite government that operate outside of the rule of law. This has been the Pluto Capricorn transit at the beginning, uh, just as we had it into 2010. We have seen a deepening down of corporate corruption and financial abuse. In 1231, Pope Gregory assigned the Dominicans to begin an inquisition to combat heresy. With the current climate of fake news and falsification of facts that we are undergoing, a similar inquisition with the war on whistleblowers and the increase of censorship. Pluto has been opposing Mercury in the United States chart for the past two years. And we have had President Trump has very clearly delineated absolutes. If you're with me, you're real news. If you aren't, you're fake news. He was on the record with Leslie Stahl eight years ago. She said, why are you calling us fake news? He said, because I have to have a way to discredit you when I receive bad publicity. But in 1325, the beginning of the Renaissance in Italy commenced. The next 20 years, we will experience a Renaissance in communications, education, art, technology, and innovation. 
this new 200 year trend is heating up. And of course it's engaging with social upheaval, revolution, death and decay signals that are always at the beginning or the precipice of a new cycle of birth and renewal. Collective values are changing. So economies are the focus into the year ahead of 2021, especially as Saturn and Uranus, both in those fixed signs, resist change and dig in to defend their respective positions. Saturn in Aquarius, control, seeking to control the population. Uranus and Taurus, wanting to get out from under the corrupt financial systems. So this period ahead and, and abuse through the financial systems. So this period ahead is marked by the Saturn square Uranus transits. And that occurs exactly on February 17th at seven degrees of Aquarius to Taurus and June 14th with Saturn now retrograde from 13, 13 degrees Aquarius to Taurus. And finally, on December 24th, 2021, with Uranus now retrograde and Saturn direct from 11 degrees Aquarius to Taurus. This transit cuts across um, Aquarius, which is the US second house of money, resources, economy, and Taurus, the fifth house of speculation in the stock market, children's affair, entertainment industries. Control and finances apply tension to the country's experience of happiness and freedom. The fifth house also represents public school systems. So traveling with this transit through 2021 is Saturn sextiling Chiron from the second house to Aries, which is the U.S. fourth house of conditions in the population, living conditions, housing conditions. The minority political party is highlighted through this period too, which we don't know who that is yet at the time of my filming on November 20th. And individuals in need of healing, human rights, freedoms, and autonomy are accompanying as is the Saturn trine the North Node in Gemini, which is about populations activating intelligent ideas, organizing principles and communication platforms and grounding itself in fact-based research and data. Globally, social media platforms are highlighted and as our strength in groups, organizing value systems, we're entering a strong period for activism as control seeks to curtail and contain. And this great social unrest is the collective demand for change and being met with resistance to that change. So that's the drama that we play out on planet Earth, the emotional experience of you know, the spiritual play, if you will. Either governments and leaders agree to change laws and policies that have become so unpopular and so corrupt, or they may be voted out of office or forced out of office. Saturn square Uranus often shows up as a separation or a divorce from duties, interestingly enough. And Chiron transiting Aries is the need for individual healing from the control programming. Also, can this be speaking to healthcare for the population in the United States? We are the most broken system of the so-called advanced countries as far as our sick care health system. And that's in place because of the pharmaceutical companies. Our government takes care of its donors and the corporate class. So, uh, you know, the wisdom to effectively organize resources via energy, entrepreneurial activities, money, or support. The issue of national health care in this country will be a strong theme into the year ahead. The Jupiter, Jupiter will also be squaring Uranus from Aquarius to Taurus. And that signature indicates sudden changes of fortune or luck. Freedom themes that require a degree of restraint 
and patience to make good decisions, breaking free from the group identity, identity politics. Well, I'm black or I'm, I'm a female or I'm this. I'm not so much interested in the costume one is wearing as their policies, their views and their belief systems. And of course, since I've been a little girl, I'm like, why are people discriminating against just this outer stuff? That doesn't make any sense. It still doesn't make sense. But I always wanna know, okay, that's nice. You're a lovely black woman, but what are your belief systems and what's your history, <laughs> right? So breaking free from group identity, Jupiter rules religion, higher education, airlines, journalists, and higher court activities, Supreme Courts, the high court of the land. And Jupiter squares Uranus on January 15th, 2021, from seven degrees of uh, Aquarius to seven degrees of Taurus. And his only contact uh, with Uranus and both Chiron occurs in January, and then Jupiter moves on. And then uh, it trines that North Node in Gemini in February, which is group discussion, facts, research, data, decisions, collective energy. January sees the central energy of Uranus as Uranus is stationing direct on January 14th at seven degrees of Taurus and Mars is heading into Taurus in January. The economy is going to be the focus. Uh, you know, the hood is being pulled up to see how the engine's running. And um, this is going to be an interesting year for all of that. Things are changing and breaking apart, but most of the narratives of the energy during this time are from sources and entities with limited perspectives. Ponder upon all that is coming up into the light of clarity and love for you. This is a great awakening and it's not an understatement and pay attention to what is coming up to the surface for healing within yourself and in your world and in your reality and how you create your hologram because everything you're out see seeing out there is also a bit of a reflection for you. Where are your wounds? Where are your disassociations, your fragmentations? May this cycle bring you bountiful new growth, commitments and opportunities to reach, define and achieve your goals and lead you toward greater fulfillment, meaning, and purpose. For those of you who would like to come in for some soul coaching, I'm a coach first and an astrologer second. And yes, I do go in and pull the hood up and say, why are you here? <laughs> why did you come here? What did you write in for yourself? So if that's of interest to you, links are below as well. Much love to everybody and happy great conjunction.